Yeah, it's called a ladle. It's full of hot, fiery 2000 degree Beskar. Touch it, touch it. If you would like to win this diorama that I am touching right now, this backdrop that fits inside of a Detolf shelf, or if you would like to learn how to make one of these yourself, stay tuned to the end of the video for instructions on how you can enter to win or how you can make one yourself. Well, you look at this beautiful box. Man, it's beautiful because she's on it. I have been wanting this figure since I saw the show in the form of a hot toy. Um, welding, you know, she's essentially a Mandalorian welder. Welding is very close to my heart. I've done a lot of really cool projects. I taught myself how to weld very poorly, I might add. I am not a good welder, but I have fun doing it. And this helmet design really reminded me of another helmet design I've always loved in film and TV. Um, so I was really looking forward to getting this figure. I always hoped they would make it and I'm so glad they did it as an exclusive. It's a limited run. It just makes it feel that much more special that I have it. Along the lines of sort of being the Mandalorian welder, I noticed immediately when, when, he saw, when we saw her in her first scene, her uh, sort of uh, kilt here really looks a lot like welding leathers as well as her gloves remind me a lot of welding gloves or even barbecue gloves if you will um and you know if you're not familiar with welding and how safe you need to be um her the welding process means that you need to protect yourself from the light created by welding because it's so bright it can actually sunburn you i've done that to my forearms before welding without uh, wearing the proper leathers. So not only is this an awesome design, but the person who designed it and who did this costume or team that did it at Lucasfilm were thinking literally about the process of what this character would need to be doing physically in the real uh, world if they were actually welding and making armor out of Beskar. So to me, this is super special. It really, really shows um, the thought that goes into armor. You know, it's not just, oh, let's just make it out there. Who cares? Whatever, make it up, make it look cool. Let's sell toys. It's let's think this out so it makes sense in the universe that we're putting it in. And here we go. I'm excited. <laughs> I absolutely love the patina here on her helmet. Um, this helmet, obviously the Mandalorians have always been sort of a Star Wars proxy for like Spartan or Roman warriors even. And this helmet is very, very clearly an homage to that style of that period. I absolutely love that design. I've always loved that design. I remember drawing uh, Spartan warriors in fifth and sixth grade all the time just because I thought their helmets were so cool. This one is really special to me because it really feels like it brings home that whole um, aesthetic and vibe. Uh, just, just look at that. They did such a great job. Hot Toys, it's better and better all the time. Um, I really, 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 really love the entire concept behind this character. She's essentially, you know, she's the leader of the clan, of course, but she's also uh, utilitarian, meaning like all of her garb is very indicative of what a welder in our real world would actually wear, right? They would wear full coverings to protect themselves from the rays of UV light created by the welding arc. And they would have heavy leather gloves. They would have a leather apron. And she's even wearing leather spats as well, which is just, it's all very indicative of a metal worker. And they've made it fit with the Mandalorian aesthetic. I've never been one of those guys who would really, I think, fit within like the Mandalorian Burks costume club because they're always focused on screen accuracy. I'm one of the guys who'd want to be creating the new suits like this. Absolutely love this design. It's beautiful. I was so excited to see it, a new take on the armor and a new take on, um, you know, the uh, specific skills of the warrior wearing the armor. We have this beautiful Wookiee pelt here that is really, really nicely shaped down. It's a cool other piece of armor and you can see those shoulder pads there where they cut off. Uh, but they really, really do sell the illusion of leather really, really well. Um, and the little accent she has here on her uh, sort of t-shirt portion, as well as here in this cast vinyl, really, really sells that illusion of leather. 
The belt looks amazing with a different, like there's some slots here where you could put the tools if you needed to. I probably won't be doing that. And these look like they were added on. They weren't uh, cast and glued on. At least this piece on the right looks like it was added on separately. I love her spats here, her leather spats that actually go around. I have some spats that I wear with my steampunk costume that I made years ago that are actually meant to be leather like this. They have little gold buttons on the side. But this character really feels super steampunk as well as like the Mandalorian maker. <laughs> you know, she's the welder. You know, she does all the, uh, the welding here as you see in the picture on the cover. Just a beautiful character. She just has this one bend at the elbow, not a double bend, but as you see in the uh, picture here on the cover of the box, they are implying that you can get her into this pose if you want to. I'll probably put her in some sort of like a casual pose in my collection. I'm not necessarily going to put her in that pose. Um, she gets a single bend at the knee, um, and there is, uh, you know, probably about, uh, what is that, 100 degrees, 120, 10 degrees of movement from front to back on her hip. And then side to side, you get a pretty good amount of movement. If you want to have her stepping out, you know, or stepping back, you could do that pretty well. There's a lot of rotation movement in the hip. There's a big uh, division here between the ankle and the foot, which is good. That'll allow for a lot of movement, which also the spats, uh, they were probably happy about that because it allowed them to hide that seam really well so they can make it even more open, which is cool. Um, she's got a lot of... Um, head uh, front to back and a lot of head side to side movement and swivel, but the hips are pretty stiff. There's really not much going on there. You know, uh, as you can see, there's not a lot of movement there. The uh, arms come up, pretty strong joint there too. The arms come up to 90 degrees out and all the way down and forward, a little bit above, well, quite a bit above forward actually. And then back, uh, yeah, about, uh, what is that? 45% back, 45 degrees back. And something I wanted to note is the, her hands feel much more rubbery uh, than the other hands for most of my other hot toys. I don't know if they changed materials or I'm just noticing this for the first time. But I actually like it. I actually feel like it's good. And I don't know if it was maybe because of the way they had to match the paint. Maybe their paints needed that different material. But it just feels softer than normal, which is fine. Um, sometimes softer means more elastic, which means it's less likely to crack or break over time. You see that? It's very bendy. But I'm cool with that. She comes with only one additional uh, right hand and three left hands. I, I do, I've seen a co another reviewer mention that they were concerned that they would have liked to have more left hands, but I, or more right hands, excuse me, but I think this is implying to us that the character might be left-handed. Um, so I really don't have a problem with that. I mean, I don't need 50 billion hands to pose her. So I'm fine with honestly two, even two hands, one that grips and one is open is fine with me. Um, or two grippy hands and two open hands. So I'm happy with this. I'm satisfied with the amount of hands that we get. And of course the paint job on them looks very much like a nice welding leather gauntlet paint job. She comes with her little beautiful uh, welding torch here to get her little welding process started. She's got these cool little tongs here for taking her hot dogs off the barbecue. And uh, there actually is a real rivet here that has riveted these two together and it does operate. So, you know, if you wanted to use these to get your sushi on, you know, or pick up her hand, you know, uh, very poorly, you could do that. Functional accessories for the uh, Womando on the go. This hammer design is really, really cool. I love it. Um, the, the big long back on here doesn't seem very practical when it comes to actual armoring, but of course this is just a fun design meant to look outer spacey here. There is a pretty pronounced seam on this. The camera doesn't show it off. Well, there you go. You can see a pretty pronounced seam on that. Um, in the picture here on the back, it looks like it was, this was the prototype and this seam was cleaned up or they cleaned it up in Photoshop. Really pronounced seam on that. I'm a little disappointed in that because obviously you don't put a hammer together by putting two halves together. So it kind of takes away a little bit of the illusion from the hammer for me. Uh, but from the side, it looks great. From the front, it looks great. It's just kind of from the, uh, from the top and from the back, it starts to lose the illusion of being a metal hammer, even though I do love this piece. The funniest piece that she comes with, she comes with a ladle, a little ladle for the Womando. She's got a little ladle full of melted Beskar. And that is glued in there. Um, I, did, I, I do agree with some of the other reviewers. I would have liked to be able to remove this um, just for the fun of it, you know, so she could have an empty ladle. And then when she's, you know, doing her smelting, she could have a full ladle. You know, typically you wouldn't ladle things that you smelted. You would put them into 
a crucible, but I guess that's what we're assuming this is, is some type of Mandalorian Beskar crucible. Uh, but anyways, here is the Mandalorian ladle. First ever, folks. First in the universe. A Mandalorian shiny little ladle. Ladle. Of course, she comes with a single ingot of Beskar, which actually I do think is quite beautiful. Um, it isn't 100% screen accurate. It doesn't have little chunks on the back taken out. The logo is a little bit wrong. Just for comparison's sake, I wanted to bring in my full real Damascus uh, ingot of Beskar that I got from a company in Australia. I think it took them like four or five months to get this to me because they actually hand make these and then clean them up and then press them. This is actually hammered and uh, forge welded Damascus metal, just like the metal that you saw in the show. So this is my actual piece of Beskar. It is very, very heavy. It's solid Damascus steel. But as you can see, the logo is doesn't match and it doesn't have those little slots on the back, but that's okay. And she comes with this cool metal plate that is like the Durasteel plate for Armando after he gets beat. Looks like the one that after he gets beat up by the Mudhorn. Uh, actually, that one's, I guess, bent, huh? But this is pretty cool. The finish on it is nice and shiny. If this is indicative of the finish we're going to be getting on Season 2 Mandu, that is promising. This is a little less shiny than I guess I'd want it to be. Like, although I think the camera is pulling it back a little bit. It looks more shiny in real life. It is just a recast of the plate from Durasteel Mando, just without the paint finish. You can see all of the weathering damage is identical, but that's cool. You know, that makes sense. It's cheap and it's effective. It gets the illusion across. She comes with this really, really cool diorama base. I do love this Star Wars themed base, this gradation. Um, and it does have this nice sort of bronze copper patina finish um, with this uh, shiny, shiny nameplate. Normally I don't use figure stands like this, but I feel like this one would look great with her, with her copper colored um, chest plate. I probably still won't use it. Um, she's gonna be displayed along, alongside my Boba Fett variants, my Heavy Mando, and my Din Djarin's. I'm gonna kind of have a whole, build a whole clan. That's my plan. Of course, she comes with the uh, standard waist grabber. This is not the crotch grabber. This is the waist grabber for her, which makes sense because she's wearing a skirt and we don't want to be unladylike, do we? So we've got to have the waist grabber so that uh, you can snap it in here into the base. Wow, that's actually really, really hard to get in there. The uh, dimension of the uh, this slotted piece here on the bottom middle feels like it's exactly the same dimension as these slots. Like it's not compensated at all. Like, see how it's kind of going forward and back? It's not actually going in. It's only going in on one of the ends. So it looks like once I force this in, it's gonna be hard to get out. If you may not want to use this stand, don't attach the waist grabber if you plan on taking it back apart and putting it in the box right away. Um, because it looks like this is gonna be really, really, uh, yeah, I'm gonna, like if I push, that's gonna like snap and I'm gonna be afraid to pull that back out because I'm gonna be afraid I'm gonna scuff this up. So just be aware of that. They gave it an extremely, extremely, Toit fit. Of course, underneath all of this, she does have this backdrop. Again, I don't use these in my space, but if you have like a nice shelving unit that she is gonna go in, a lot of other uh, Mandos, this might be pretty cool. You've got the cool Mando sigil right there, the Mythosaur skull, and some sort of um, control panel, and it opens up to see her forge, which is a nice printed image of what we see in the uh, film. This is actually made of nice, uh, heavy, um, cardboard. It's not like a thin flimsy piece of paper like I uh, honestly have some of the other ones Hot Toys has done like for the Wasp and the Ant-Man. But this is nice. This is actually pretty heavy duty. It's kind of like one of those science fair displays. Let's see what she looks like inside of this. Not bad, not bad. If you wanted to put her in your shelf by herself, uh, that might be a pretty cool way to display her. Shelf by herself. And of course after we've opened everything we have the instructions. Who cares? So just some shameless self-promotion here. Um, about six years ago, I built this completely um, Beskar or 18-gauge uh, steel Mandalorian helmet myself. Um, I designed it in the computer using Rhinoceros 3D, which is a NURBS modeling program. Um, and I, I exported it to Pepicura and created a 2D um, printable flat file for patterns. I traced it on a steel, cut it out. I bought a cheap welder. I taught myself how to weld and I put this together. Now, I never really finished it, but this is actually part of a grander project I had. 
my plan was to do a Mandalorian knight. I wanted to do a Mandalorian who was sort of a mishmash or mishmash or mishmash Spartan soldier, Roman soldier, and Mandalorian with some Star Wars added flair to it. Um, I've always loved the design like many people have, but I wanted to do my own thing. And so if you scroll back six years on my Instagram, you can see all of the active updates with me uh, welding this together and creating some of the chest plates. I had two versions. One looked way more uh, female and thin. It didn't really work for my frame and what I was going for. I still have those armor pieces, by the way, if anybody would like to buy them. Um, but... I never finished the project. It's in a trunk up on my shelf and uh, I'm tempted to revisit it. I had the gauntlets cut out and shaped, the chest armor cut out and shaped, the shield that I was gonna wear on my back with two lightsabers. I was gonna be like a Mandalorian Jedi Knight. Um, and I had the helmet made. So that's all sitting around in various places in my shop. If you'd like to see me do that project, Give me a thumbs up, a subscribe, and tell me in the comments below. And maybe I'll revisit that next year after I'm caught up with all of my diorama pieces. Um, but regarding diorama pieces, if you would like to win this diorama here that is being displayed, this is uh, a diorama that I designed to fit inside of a Detolf shelf and fit at least two Hot Toys figures. This is designed for one sixth scale, although you could use it for one twelfth scale if you wanted to, or even one seventh. Um, it doesn't really have any features that make it one sixth. It was just made with a one sixth scale figure in mind. So if you would like to win this diorama, you need to number one, be subscribed to the channel. And number two, you need to leave a comment on this video specifically. All right, you can say whatever you want. Give me your thoughts about the figure. Give me your thoughts about my helmet. Give me your thoughts about Grogu eating red hot Beskar. You know, tell me what you think about any of that. And that will enter you to win because I'm going to do one of those YouTube random comment picker giveaways. And I will pick a comment that was given on this video that you're watching right now. You have to still be subscribed to the channel, but as long as you're subscribed and you left a comment on this video, you will be entered into that random picker giveaway you could win this diorama. If you would like to learn how to make this diorama, I have a full instructional video on how you can make this. In fact, it's actually showing you how I made this diorama. So if you're ambitious, you're a maker, you wanna spend a day or two working on this diorama and making one yourself or learning how these techniques work so you can make your own display, please go watch my video. But if you're lazy like I am and you just wanna win something, subscribe to the channel, hit the thumbs up if you wouldn't mind, and you have to leave a comment on this video. When this channel reaches 2,000 subscribers and we're less than 400 away, I will do this giveaway, I will post the video, and I will get a hold of you, and I will send you this diorama when we hit 2,000 subscribers. If you'd like to help support a growing Mandalorian clan, uh, we appreciate anything you do for us over on our Patreon. We're trying to build uh, the first uh, Mandalorian clan community where all we do is make for a living. Any support you can give us is appreciated, even if just a thumbs up. Go check out our Patreon. We have wonderful people over there like Kimberly Moore, Glenn Page, Chris Herndon, Jason Yang, Eli Vader, Avidas01, and NJ Tree. Thank you so much, guys, for your support. I really appreciate it. You guys are absolutely helping me and all of us over here at our Mandalorian clan achieve our dream of being nothing but makers, making wonderful things for all of you to enjoy. Thank you for watching. Thank you for support. We hope you have a great day.